Loving, gracious Father, uh, we look forward to Wednesday evenings now. It's become, a, uh, it's become such a wonderful ritual for us to come together. And uh, what a privilege it is for us to be able to talk to one another. But uh, we are grateful that you are there with us. You are uh, guiding us, helping us. We know that you are certainly helping us to grow in the knowledge of all of these subjects that we uh, have from the scriptures. Today, we are going to discuss the spiritual discipline of fasting. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we've come to this, uh, we've reached this level. Uh, and we do want to understand uh, these, uh, these uh, disciplines. And we understand and know that these disciplines are for our benefit. It is not a thing that uh, we are gaining brownie points with, but it is just for us to learn uh, to become closer to you. So we commit this study into your hands. We continue to ask you, Father, to lead us, guide us, especially as we discuss and interact with one another. Uh, and as we do that, it's not just growing in knowledge, but also growing to know one another and keep knowing one another, uh, because that's what happens even in the in the Trinitarian reality that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are knowing one another. So we come into the study into your hands. Thank you so much for this opportunity in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. I will uh, go back to my gallery view. <laughs> uh, today we are discussing <clears throat> the spiritual discipline of fasting. Now, I don't know about you, but I can definitely say <laughs> that this is probably the most difficult one for, I'm sure for many, but certainly for myself. Uh, you know, fasting and staying away from food, uh, something I enjoy indulging in, something that I <laughs> enjoy eating, uh, you know, that is a tough one. I still remember back when I was a teenager and I came to know about the Day of Atonement, uh, and we were told that the Day of Atonement can only be observed, uh, you know, correctly if it was a full 24-hour day. <laughs> so that was intimidating. And if that was not enough, we were also told that no water. I mean, it's just bad enough you don't have food, but there is no water. You couldn't drink a, a, a sip of water. And I still remember when I, I was literally, you know, crawling to the dining table when I was waiting for the sunset to take place and the day would end. And uh, I probably picked out <laughs> that evening. But yes, uh, fasting has been a tough one for a lot of people. But the Bible mentions fasting. The Bible talks about it. And... There are many uh, discussions that have gone on uh, about fasting, and some of it are quite, uh, you know, interesting. I would say very controversial. Uh, for example, some say when you fast, you release God's power. As though God is a power and you need to uh, fast so that you can release it, right? Otherwise, it's all bottled up. Oh, and some people talk about fasting, releasing God's power. Um, some others would like to indicate that fasting proves our love for God. That we are showing that we are, we real, we mean business in terms of our relationship and our love for God. So that's how some people look at it. Uh, right. Some, of course, uh, talk about it being a, a physical detox. You probably heard how you can physically detox yourself and fasting is one of those. And some would like to add the spiritual element to it. So say they say uh, fasting also is a spiritual detox. So, uh, you know, for whatever it's worth, I thought I'll just mention that. Uh, there is one school of thought where they say, Fasting is a form of worship. Uh, it's, it's a way that we can worship God. So that is how some people would like to look at it. Uh, and 
maybe uh, another one which is uh, uh, probably has given some thought to it. They say fasting is less about what we are giving up and much more about what we are making room for. Uh, I thought that was very interestingly put. It is less about what we are giving up and much more about what we are making room for. So that is, these are the various ways fasting is looked at. Now, uh, once again, I, uh, like I mentioned to you, uh, you know, it is uh, not something that easily comes for many people. Some people probably are much more uh, attuned to fasting and they can do it with, without as much effort we keep hearing about, you know, churches meeting for fasting and prayer. And some people like to do it in the night. And so they sometimes take fasting through the whole night, you know, uh, and, and, and even remaining awake. So they don't even sleep on, on, you know. So it is being done on various, you know, uh, various ways. And some people understand it in various ways. So uh, I've uh, penned down a few thoughts about fasting. Uh, and I read one very interesting article, and I'll share some thoughts for, uh, to you, uh, with you from that article. Uh, but as I was looking into this, you know, there are, there are many things you can say. There are many scriptures you can take, many examples you can take from the, from the Bible with regards to how people fasted. Obviously, we wouldn't have time for, uh, you know, looking at all of it. But like we have normally done. Uh, what is your experience of fasting? Have you fasted? Maybe some of you probably have done it for more than 24 hours. I've heard of some of you doing it probably for three days, you know, three day fasting. Uh, what have you learned from fasting? Maybe and specifically, can you share with us how have you benefited from fasting? Can you, um, you know, uh, give us some points of benefits that you may have experienced personally. So I'm going to open it up for now some comments. Let's uh, hear it from you. And then I'll share my, some of my thoughts uh, from the scriptures. All right. So let's see who's going first now. Uh, yes, Franklin, go ahead. Okay. He was probably just uh, rubbing his chin, maybe. I thought he was raising his head. No, sir, nothing, nothing to share. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, anyone fasted for more than, you know, three days, four days, five days? Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Mrs. Noah, uh, once again, somebody should help you with that unmuting. And I think you have something to share with us. Go ahead. Because I, I can't uh, fast like that, uh, being a, an asthma patient, so I don't fast. One, one, one day I can do. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, so you are citing medical reasons. Obviously, lots of people have medical reasons, especially, I think this was one big question we used to ask when, you know, in our old uh, uh, WCG days. Uh, especially for those who are diabetic, you know, fasting can be uh, sometimes fatal, uh, dangerous. So uh, we used to get questions from a number of people citing all kinds of medical reasons for not fasting on the Day of Atonement. Remember, the Day of Atonement was compulsory fast. No water, no food. So, uh, yes, uh, please share any thoughts that you might have. Yes, I, Bertie, go ahead. Uh, the Bible mentions uh, about fasting as afflicting your soul, afflicting your body. Uh, Bertie, we would like you to share your thoughts. I mean, don't bring in the Bible at this moment. Okay. <laughs> how, do you, how do you, uh, what is your experience of fasting? My experience of fasting is I would do it regularly uh, uh, in, in the years past, uh, but I, with the result of humbling myself, and uh, I would realize that uh, when I do, I was not missing the fast I was doing, but I was, I was sort of not benefiting it, not benefiting from it. I wanted to 
we uh, you know wanted more of the spiritual more into prayer more into the spiritual you know uh, spiritual uh, knowledge spiritual you know connection but i in my experience i never i don't think i benefited much from it though i would regularly fast as such so, somewhat i would somewhat have benefit but it was not to my satisfaction could you could you tell us why i mean uh, was the fasting uh, like a distraction i mean the fact that you were going hungry uh, were you distracted and that was not helping you concentrate i mean just wanted to know what what was your experience there no the hunger uh, hunger feelings were there uh, mm -hmm. and that was uh, very realistic yeah that but i wanted uh, you know the time that i was fasting to be more into prayer and more into uh, you know meditation of the word of god which i uh, i failed to do actually okay so it looks like you were watching the clock to see when the when the time is going to get over <laughs> i'm just i'm just kidding yes uh, thank you bertie yes i can understand vanessa go ahead uh make sure you unmute yes okay i i will tell you my experience about uh, i tried fasting in uh, in our catholic one they say that during lent time for the 40 uh, 40 days you either give up something or okay. give up eating like meat or something like that kind so i i i of course don't give up eating meat but once i tried uh, to uh, fast till 3 o'clock so i thought after 3 o'clock then i will eat so i tried that for 40 days after 3 o'clock then i would eat anything so okay. for 40 days i managed to do that and uh, another time i tried for 40 days to have uh, liquids like uh, not to eat uh, any solid food uh, during the day so i tried that and that was very difficult because that's the time that i was in a school and they had organized a trip to jaipur so uh, i had been i had been selected to go on the trip with the children and we were booked into very good hotels where they were having buffets with lovely food so yeah. that those, those, that time was really difficult to seeing the lovely food and the and the non veg and everything i was so tempted to eat like something yeah. solid so that okay. was the second time where of course i tried and i managed to uh, have only the liquid okay. and the third time the third time was uh, when i again uh, started uh, the 40 days of lent fasting one is when i came into grace communion church and uh, that's the time when i was sitting to eat and then parveen told me you're a veg or non veg because i had taken only a uh, veg food then i said no it is lent time so not to eat then parvin advised me god doesn't say that you have to give up this that i mean how he explained it to me it was very nice so that yeah. was the only time i tried fasting otherwise other than that now i don't fast of course not at okay. all not even for one day do i fast right Okay, well, interesting. It looks like Praveen has been deceiving you quite a bit, right? <laughs> no, I'm just joking, obviously. But uh, yes, it looks like you were going through some partial fast. But uh, did you? Can you uh, document any kind of a spiritual benefit from have, having done that? Yeah, that's the time I used to. I used to say that if you're fasting bodily, then mentally you have to fast also. so mentally i was trying to uh, be good to people whom of course i didn't like so much at those times so i was trying to have a lot of patience okay. so these are the things small things i couldn't do bigger things than that i couldn't uh, think just like i was impatient that time i was used to get angry fast so those things i tried to control interesting yes you talk about a mental fast and that's the first time i'm hearing about it interesting yeah okay yes buddy you want to come back on this you're on uh, please unmute buddy thank you regarding fast i would observe when i say fast to me it was a full 24 hour fast without food and water okay all right right any other stall words of fasting yeah <laughs> 
Uh, I'm sure, uh, Sikinda, you know, you remember our old days, and uh, I'm sure you were uh, very strict with your fasting, were you? <laughs> yeah, if you're saying something, unmute, uh, Sikinda. Please, uh, yeah, please unmute. Yes. Years before, and my wife fell sick in 2004. Uh, from that day onwards, I could not do it because of, I also suffered with some weakness before yeah. that I was there, before 2004. Okay. I kept it. And uh, uh, I read for the benefits also, sustenance, integrity, and uh, patience, all that. Okay. Interesting, yes. All right. Anything else? Uh, uh, any, any, any questions? Uh, any questions that you might have uh, about fasting? And then we'll get into some scriptural perspective. Yes, Anil, you had a thought? <laughs> yeah, well, we, I have fasted, uh, of course, during the good old days and even later. Uh, full 24-hour fast, no water, no uh, food and all that, um, and try to spend a little more time in, uh, you know, prayer or Bible reading. But I, if I'm honest, I can't really say that I benefited spiritually. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, I mean, when we say uh, benefiting spiritually, what do we mean? I mean, um, do we feel the presence of God or do we feel more closer to him or what? What does that mean? So uh, I really couldn't, uh, I couldn't make out the difference between our normal days and fasting days, except that, of course, you are craving for water all the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, yeah, that, that, I mean, what is it that we expect uh, spiritually when we fast? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Mrs. Noah, you wanted to say something. Uh, once again, uh, you are on, on mute. Can someone help her, please? <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, we can't hear. Okay, we'll come back to you, Mrs. Noah. Looks like uh, uh, we, we couldn't hear you because you are still on mute. All right. Uh, we'll come back to you. Okay. Um, let me then we just go ahead and uh, share some thoughts. Uh, yeah, it's interesting that uh, I think uh, there is a struggle uh, with many of us perhaps uh, that might not fully appreciate or probably even experience a sense of spiritual benefit uh, because it is uh, it is uh, you know we are not we are not made for you know going without food for such a long time. Uh, so I suppose there is a big question mark on that, but let me see what I can share, and maybe you'll have some thoughts. Uh, you could you could also share with uh, with with all of us. Uh, I was uh, just reading an article by uh, author. The author's name is Stuart Chase, uh, and he writes uh, in an article that is titled. Uh, the spiritual discipline of fasting. And I have taken some points uh, uh, from his article. But I've also brought in a few other thoughts from our own uh, GCI website. Let's begin by asking the question, what is fasting? You know, um, for, especially from a biblical perspective. Now, the, uh, the word fasting obviously is abstaining from food. And from a biblical perspective, that I think is what is crucial for us to understand. It is related to physical food. Because the reason I say that is lots of people talk about uh, fasting from, I mean, they, they talk about abstaining from using the cell phone or using any social media and they say, well, that, you know, I'm, I'm fasting uh, or, you know, staying away from, you know, meeting anyone or, uh, or, 
or, or any kind of pleasure, pleasurable activity. And they say that's fasting. But the Bible doesn't seem to identify fasting with that. Uh, it is uh, denying oneself food specifically. You know, and the reason I say that is the Apostle Paul in, uh, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7, he talks about husbands and wives. And he says that sometimes it is necessary to abstain from sexual pleasure by mutual consent uh, for a limited time. But he doesn't talk about that as fasting. So just abstaining yourself from that kind of a pleasure by mutual consent uh, so that you can devote yourself to prayer, as he says, is not called fasting. Uh, fasting is specifically focused on, uh, you know, uh, staying away from food. So that is one thing that perhaps uh, we can uh, glean from the scriptures. When we talk about fasting, it is specifically food. If you, if you deny yourself anything else, that is not technically speaking biblical. Now, you can do that and call it, call it a fast, but that is not what something that the Bible seemed to have addressed. Uh, now, uh, the apostle does definitely commended the discipline of fasting or denying oneself, uh, you know, the, the food and water so that you can be devoted to, you know, use the same time to devote yourself to prayer, meditation, uh, and other spiritual activities. Uh, all right. So uh, I just wanted to bring up that point that the Bible does not necessarily talk about fasting in terms of social pleasure or, or any other kind of pleasure or uh, staying away from certain activities. Uh, that is not necessarily fasting in the biblical sense. Let's look at some biblical examples. And maybe I thought that would give us some thought, and I think Anil's question is very uh, you know, focused here, and maybe this might help us, right? So let's take some examples from the Bible of people fasting, and let us see how the scriptures seem to give us some insight with regards to fasting. And of course, the very first person we should go to is Jesus Christ himself, right? And we, the famous 40-day fast. Uh, of course, there were times that he went a day without food and sometimes the disciples came to him and said you know why don't you eat and then he says my food is you know uh, from above uh, and so we won't get into that because there are so many things we can talk about you know about the 40-day fast and then uh, getting into his public ministry it seems like once again we have to infer because there are no specific uh, you know, black and white statements made with regards to how Jesus benefited. But it's we, we can infer that it was a time of preparation for Jesus. So uh, what, would, what would have Jesus gained from this time of preparation by staying away from food? Maybe it was some sense of direction that he sought from the Father. Uh, as he communed with the Father and the Holy Spirit, uh, did he get some sense of direction? Can fasting give you some sense of direction in life uh, in terms of, you know, an important decision you may have to take or an important uh, project that you may need to uh, involve yourself in? Uh, so it seemed like Jesus may have fasted for a, a sense of closeness with the Father to get some direction. So that is one thing I can say. And once again, uh, you may want to comment uh, when we get to our uh, interaction. Let me get to another uh, perspective on fasting. And we remember Nehemiah fasted, Daniel fasted, you know, the prophets. And Nehemiah and Daniel seem to fast uh, in terms of confession and repentance, all right? So when 
Nehemiah was confessing the sins of Israel because they were in captivity. Daniel was fasting for the people. He seemed to be doing it as a form of confession and repentance. So can fasting be also as a way of probably showing your sense of repentance and confessing your sins? I specifically remember Jonah. You remember Jonah was asked to go to Nineveh and tell them that their city is going to be destroyed. And what does the king do? He says, well, let's uh, call for a fast. And he asked for a corporate fast. <laughs> the entire city fasted. I, of course, you know, uh, we don't have all the details, but the entire city fasted. And God changed his mind. Well, changed his mind, you know, read it uh, from, uh, you know, uh, uh, we won't analyze what changing his mind is, but it seemed like there was a corporate fast done by the city of Nineveh uh, in, the, in, the, in the sense of confession and repentance. So fasting may be associated with that. Can we say sometimes, I think, uh, if I remember well, Herbert Armstrong, uh, in those days, used to sometimes call for a day of fasting. I don't remember the exact context in which he used to call for a fast. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, at one time, our church was going through a legal issue. And uh, the state of California had uh, actually... Uh, appointed a receiver and they were going to take over the church. And I think I remember that he may have called for an annual, for a, for a worldwide fast among the, uh, among the brethren. So a corporate fast is something that the Bible talks about. So maybe there is some, some relevance there with regards to fasting. Now, uh, could fasting also indicate um, or show some sense of humility, right? Uh, I think it was Bertie who mentioned about humility, right? Um, can your fast be a way of humbling yourself? Maybe you are struggling with, you know, or you're convicted by some, some thought, some, some sin, some, some, uh, uh, some difficulty that you're facing. Is it possible that fasting could uh, relate to the way you may be sincere in humbling yourself? So that is one another way that we can look at fasting. Now in scripture, we also have fasting done as an act of mourning. You know, uh, and in, in this specific sense, uh, in, 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 for a specific example, we have David. You remember that... Uh, 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 I, I, I don't recall exactly the, uh, the specific instance. Of course, he fasted for hoping that the child would recover from, from uh, illness. And then, of course, he stopped fasting. But then we do have maybe some examples where some people may go into a sense of fast as a display of mourning. All right. So that uh, maybe seeking an, uh, uh, you know, God's direction and showing your utter dependence on God, right? So maybe that is one thing that uh, the scriptures may allude to. Now, there can also perhaps be fasting in the sense of remembrance. And I specifically talk about the Day of Atonement, which we already discussed. Can fasting also be as a remembrance of something, you know, and uh, the festival of, I mean, uh, it is listed among the festivals, but the Day of Atonement was a day of remembering that God had, uh, you know, taken away the sins of uh, Israel. What God is, has done for them. Sometimes, could fasting also be as an expression of gratitude in remembrance of God's answered prayers? So I, I, I put all of these thoughts here uh, just as a way of maybe recognizing that the scriptures refer to fasting in all of these contexts. Now, 
I think that the, the, the Bible, uh, we do have examples and the Bible talks about fasting, but I think that uh, the Bible perhaps talks more about the abuse of fasting. <laughs> Uh, especially Jesus talks quite a bit on how fasting can be abused as a spiritual discipline. And let me just spend a few moments on that uh, with regards to fasting. And I go to Matthew 6 and uh, take up what Jesus said. Matthew chapter 6, verse 16, I'll read it for you. It says, and when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. So Jesus uh, gives specific instruction here with regards to fasting. Now, why, why would he uh, condemn the way the Pharisees did? And obviously, it is a warning for us that we can indulge in this fasting at, you know, in a completely wrong manner and for the wrong reason. The hypocrites that he that uh, the Jesus referred to fasted as a show of righteousness, right? Uh, they were looking for ways to impress people. And that was, I think, uh, one of the difficulties that uh, these people never recognized. They were very uh, eager to let other people see how good they were, right? Uh, it had no spiritual benefit for them. They, they didn't seem to benefit, but they seem to have got a lot of uh, brownie points or you could say a, a public relation, you know, as a public relation uh, exercise. And we, sometimes we see that happen even in our culture, right? In, even in our societies, you have some people go on a token fast <laughs> and they will sit in a public square somewhere and fast and let people see they are fasting. And some of them probably are not really very... Uh, sincere about it. So Jesus did uh, did condemn that kind of thing. Now, Jesus did not condemn the practice of fasting, right? Or Jesus did not condemn the fact that other people will know your fast. Right? Um, so Jesus was uh, seen to validate fasting. He says, when you fast, uh, but he went on to say, well, don't do it so that you are doing it only for being seen. Right? Uh, and don't do it just to impress other people, how spiritual you are, or impress others that how great you are, that you're denying yourself uh, food and water. Right. So that is something that Jesus Christ was against. In other words, um, they were not having God in mind. They were having other people in mind uh, and maybe having their own, uh, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, reputation in mind. But God was not in the picture. And that is something that uh, the Bible constantly talks about is uh, false. Let me also mention, talking about the abuse of fasting, the Apostle Paul has some very interesting thoughts that he brings in. And one particular thought where he warns Timothy of the teaching of demons. You remember in 1 Timothy chapter 4, he talks about sometimes how people are actually teaching uh, doctrines of demons. And one of the doctrines of demons is the requirement to abstain from foods. With, and, and this is what exactly Timothy says. Uh, require abstinence from foods that God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. I'm reading from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 to 3, right? Uh, so uh, he seemed to uh, ask Timothy and uh, the, the brethren there to be careful that you don't get into these kinds of fasting, which are not uh, something that, uh, or rather that is prescribed by uh, Others as a doctrine of demons. Maybe I, I, I don't know. I've not studied enough to exactly uh, mean exactly what Timothy was saying. But there was some abstinence of foods specifically which uh, Timothy and which Paul did not approve. of. Now, Paul also writing to Colossians. 
uh, he rebuked the Colossians. Uh, this is Colossians chapter two, where he said, submitting to regulations such as do not, uh, do not taste, do not touch, do not, uh, uh, the do nots, right? Um, and he says, uh, according to human precepts and teachings. So the Apostle Paul warned uh, the Colossians that don't get into these so-called abstinences uh, that are not necessarily helpful, right? Going back to the New Testament again and uh, once again to Jesus, you remember in, uh, in the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector, Jesus Christ talks about how the uh, Pharisee praised himself for fasting twice a week, or was it twice or thrice a week? He was boasting about fasting. And Jesus Christ very clearly mentions that it is the other person, the, the, the publican, who was justified before God. So in other words, once again, Jesus Christ, uh, you know, uh, brings a condemnation against these kinds of fasts where you tend to boast. Uh, and of course, we must also beware of teachings that suggest fasting earns favor with God or guarantees answers to prayer. You know, uh, where we tend to fast thinking that you can force God to answer in a manner that you want him to answer. Uh, those kinds of thinking is not biblical and that the Bible does not teach that. Uh, just ask, just, uh, yeah, coming into the presence of God is wonderful, but uh, thinking that God's favor doesn't rest on you and that you can force God to favor you is something that, uh, once again, the Bible doesn't, uh, uh, you know, endorse. So these are some uh, thoughts that I would like to just share with you in terms of abuse of fast. Let me then look at one more thought before we open it up again for some discussion. I want to specifically discuss what Jesus uh, again discussed about fasting. Uh, he, he, he was accosted by the teachers, uh, the Pharisees especially, about fasting. And he said something very interesting. Let's just... Uh, very briefly look at that. I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 9. And uh, I will read verses 14 to 17. And uh, we will look at what Jesus meant by that. In Matthew 9, beginning in verse 14, it says, Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch tears away from the garment and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine skin put into old wine skins or rather new wine into old wine skins. If it is the skin, if it is, the skin bursts and the wine is spilled. And the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins. And so both are preserved. So uh, here again in the context of fasting, Jesus mentions these, uh, you know, uh, brings in these thoughts. And uh, once again, uh, we don't have the time to do a full study of this. But let me just make a few uh, mention of some thoughts. Um, First and foremost, here comes the Pharisees and, and tells Jesus, how come your disciples are not fasting while we have ritualistic fasting, you know, and many of them were probably fasting every week, not just once, sometimes twice. And that seemed to be uh, the way it was uh, done by the Pharisees. And for them, fasting was very important. Why? Because they believe that was being... Uh, you know, uh, that was being faithful to the ceremonial law, right? Uh, they wanted to be very meticulous in observing the ceremonial law. And fasting was part of uh, the law as they interpreted it and as they, you know, expanded it. <laughs> All right. So 
they come to jesus and says you know we are fasting two times three times a week how come you fellows are just going ahead and feasting all the time um because you know they looked at jesus and they saw how he did things and i think they were very much offended uh and jesus was enjoying you know food and you know even uh he used to do things for them was against the law and so obviously they were uh, quite offended with jesus to the pharisees by jesus and his disciples not fasting as often as they did called to question their piety their sincerity and their devotion toward the ceremonial law once again their whole perspective was from the law and they were constantly monitoring jesus whether he was observing the law or not and obviously jesus gave them plenty of occasions for them to know that uh, he was breaking the law right uh, for example he was picking grain on the sabbath uh, he uh, healed people on the sabbath specifically on the sabbath right uh, and uh, and on many occasions he used to do things that was against the ceremonial law so jesus then says can the wedding guest mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them the days will come he says when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast right so in other words jesus is saying he is referring to himself uh he is referring to himself as the bridegroom as the messiah and what he is perhaps meaning here is that when jesus is gone physically you know when he is ascended to the heavens and he is not here physically on the earth uh fasting would have a place for his disciples because maybe fasting would remind them of their dependence on him uh fasting perhaps would remind them of god's mercy towards them and the power that they need that you know uh that that they need from god uh especially with regards to salvation uh and in that respect maybe jesus is meaning fasting may be more appropriate when you are you don't have jesus with you so he is probably meaning that fasting may be a way to be closer to god uh and i'm presuming that he meant that fasting is not just abstinence from food it is combined with meditation and prayer and maybe scripture reading so this discipline is not done in isolation it is done as a combined discipline with the other disciplines to be able to find your you know sense of belonging to god uh just a thought about this uh, you know the the old garment and the new the wine in the in the old wine skins um uh, what jesus probably was saying is uh the the old covenant is not compatible with the new covenant that is i think the essence of what he was trying to indicate fasting in the way the pharisees were doing it was a sign of a devotion to the ceremonial law and jesus is saying the new covenant has come and your devotion to the ceremonial law does not is not compatible in the new or uh, when you are under the new covenant right it's he would say it's like sewing a a new piece of cloth on an old garment it's just not compatible because it will tear and similarly with the wine skins so jesus point was that the old has gone the new has come and the two are not compatible you cannot use the old covenant ways of doing things under the new um all right so that is well basically uh what i just wanted to share with you uh and so let me leave it at that and uh, open it up for some thoughts or questions or comments that you'd like to make all right go ahead yes sorry murthy go ahead 
the Old Testament, in the five books of Moses, it does not prescribe any fasting other than day of atonement. So, this talk of Pharisees and Jesus mentioning old skin or new wine, something like that. Uh, I think it has to be understood in a different perspective. Because Old Testament does not prescribe any, any law asking for fasting other than Day of Atonement. So, so how would you understand? No, I am just thinking. Okay. I am thinking that we have to uh, see it from a different perspective. Okay. So, I, accusing the um, Old Testament in this context is not correct because it does not prescribe fasting other than day of atonement. Because you say, I mean, the New Testament says, how come we are fasting and you are not fasting? So they, oh. are, they were fasting frequently. Okay. Other than day of atonement. Yeah. So what you're saying is that the Pharisees were uh, adding to uh, the law and doing their own thing and Jesus was finding fault with that. Yes. Is, yes. That, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes, All right. That is definitely correct. Right. Uh, it, would it be wrong to say that uh, when Jesus was talking about the old garment and the, and the wine skins, uh, he could also allude to the fact that the old covenant could not be, you know, uh, compatible with the new? Uh, would it be wrong to say that? No, in fact, the frequent fasting is not related to the old covenant at all. Okay. The frequent fasting is not related to the old covenant at all. So I have to understand. I have not understood it. All right. Maybe we should do a study on that, you know, a little yeah. bit more deeply. Okay. Any thoughts? Any other thoughts from the others? Uh, Sikinda, yes. Go ahead, Sikinda. You need to unmute yourself. In our times, we used to have good food till late 60s or early 70s. That is good food means natural food. After that, they used to mix the chemicals, fertilizers, manures, and all that. And that there is a physical uh, influence on fasting. They are being medicated. On our body is not used to that uh, fertilizers and this thing. Uh, I think that there is a change there is a change in fasting, making it lesser because we see now, right now we see the pandemic. Pandemic, we didn't know that. Two years before we don't, we didn't uh, know that, but uh, it is influencing. That is influencing the whole world. In our faith also it is affected. Like that, the fasting also uh, influenced by these factors, that is fertilizers and all, even water also. Uh, if I can understand it, uh, what you're saying, Sikinda, you're probably saying that uh, fasting can be, uh, you know, physically helpful because of the ingestion of so many chemicals. Is that what you're trying to say? That uh, it is affecting medical uh, reason? Yes, yes, it is affecting uh, some medicines we have to take. That is being obstructed. That doesn't say we don't have to keep fasting. We have to keep fasting. But uh, these are all the factors which are affecting our physical health. Fasting depends upon our health, but it still affects the uh, physical health. How oh, that's uh, that we have to bear this. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Yes, buddy, go ahead. Regarding fasting, 
uh, as Anil uh, Anil uh, seconds it, that uh, uh, we do fast. He said in uh, years gone by, I would uh, I was similar, and I'm not doing it as frequently as I was very frequent in fasting. But as he mentioned, and I mentioned too, we did not derive the benefits, spiritual benefits from fasting. I would. Uh, uh, that is one point. Secondly, was it because of distraction? Was it because not uh, what it is that really we did not? Of course, we could not get ourselves to pray more or meditate more or, you know, uh, more or so, you know, without, uh, I wouldn't say that I was wanting to get rid of a particular problem or what, but I like what Vanessa said. Uh, she uh, fasted, uh, you know, because uh, she knew that she needed God's help and that she she is less angry. Uh, uh, she has learned to overcome that anger or it's much less than what it was. I feel when you fast, uh, I feel that God, uh, uh, it should be like God should open you up, uh, open your heart and tell you what what is this, what is that even, uh, you know, David mentioned, uh, who can know his secret faults, you know, save me, deliver me from uh, secret faults and presumptuous sins. There are sins which God can see clearly and which we are not seeing, maybe fasting can help us, God, to open up and to let you know. Secondly, of what you do know, uh, uh, that, you know, God helps you to get rid of it and uh, help you to, you know, because uh, you are emptying, you're wanting God and you're realizing, and it's a way of humility, uh, it's a humbling experience and it's a way of humility, but you want the change to take place in you more to conform to, to Christ. And to help you to overcome it. Okay, thank you, Bertie. Uh, you're basically saying that uh, fasting uh, uh, helps you to uh, seek God's guidance, right? And I, when you said that, it reminded me of Proverbs chapter one, where it says, "Acknowledge all your ways before Him, and He shall guide your paths." Uh, and so perhaps. Could we put fasting and maybe sincerely, you know, acknowledge yourself before God so that you can be guided? Uh, once again, yes. Uh, uh, this this aspect of you know specific spiritual benefits. Uh, I don't know. Uh, any any thoughts on that? But do you want to come back on that? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, let me add it. But as Anil says, and uh, even up to the present time, I don't derive the spiritual benefits that I would want to. <laughs> on, this, on this fast. Can somebody speak to Bertie about this? <laughs> Anyone has any comments about that? Uh, Mrs. Noah, we can't hear you, um, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> Praveen, I'm not sure if you if you want to send a message to Linda or someone. <laughs> Mrs. Noah wants to say something, but unfortunately we can't hear her. <laughs> uh, in the book of Leviticus, we know about the feast, all about how to observe, what to do, all that is written there. So we used to follow them. And, uh, and uh, on the day of atonement, we were fasting sincerely uh, without any uh, obligation. So we were totally observing and uh, that benefited us in, in, in a spiritual way. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you, Mrs. Noah. At least, it, at least it made you feel closer to God, perhaps. <laughs> right? Yeah. But yes. Uh, and, anyone, uh, anyone talk about benefits? Yes. Go ahead, Bertie. Uh, one more thing, could we observe a church fast on the Day of Atonement, not mentioning it as a Day of Atonement as such, but we know uh, God uh, removing our sins and making us, you know, replacing it with the righteousness of God. Uh, but could we, could we decide on a, national, on a fast, on a All India fast, say, by, uh, observed by the church, and uh, for all who, could, who, who would want to join in, I suggest fix a day in the year. Say day of atonement, say it could be on a day of atonement. Well, you're you're moving away from the topic here. Uh, <laughs> let's let's stay with you know the benefits of fasting. I think Anil, you had a thought you wanted to share. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Surya Murthy, go ahead. Yes, sorry. Um, 
Go ahead, Suri Murthy. Uh, uh, is there an internet problem there? Uh, not sure. Let us not add anything to what, what is said in the Bible. Uh, we, couldn't, uh, we couldn't hear you completely. Can you can you rephrase your uh, your comments? Let us not add. Let us not add anything to what is already stated in the Bible. Okay. Okay. Uh, you are not able to hear. Me? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we understood what you said just now. You said don't add anything to the what the scripture says. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, you, we can already see that this is not an easy subject uh, because, uh, first of all, it is not easy to do it. Uh, it's a pretty difficult, tough uh, spiritual discipline. On the other hand, I think we're all struggling to, uh, to, to find exactly how we can benefit. I, I presume it is different for different people. Uh, some people seem to thrive on it. Some people do it regularly. Some people probably don't uh, do it as much. And some people don't see any benefit at all. In it. So, uh, well, any, any, any final thoughts on this? Yes, Vanessa, go ahead. Okay, so uh, about this fasting, I will tell you something else that uh, I was brought up in a, a Catholic uh, boarding school. So in the Catholic boarding school, uh, of course, Easter time, we were in school, we didn't go home. So on Good Friday, on Good Friday, we were supposed to do fasting as the nuns told us on Good Friday, you fast. And early in the morning, they used to wake us up. And then we used to go visiting seven churches or 13 churches, like an odd number. So we used to go walking. And while we are going visiting each church, we used to pray. So, and then we came back to school after visiting a certain amount of churches. And then, of course, the afternoon uh, prayers and the mass and all used to go on. So, we used to get only dinner then, just before going to sleep. Then school used to give us dinner. But we were not uh, told that why we were fasting or what, what benefits or what we had to do. We only knew that it was Good Friday. We had to do fasting. We had to go visit seven churches or 13 churches or that. So, I mean, that, that fasting we did, but we it didn't help us in any way. Even if we prayed along the way, prayed in every church, but it didn't benefit us because we were not exactly told that why we were supposed to fast on Good Friday. Yes, I guess that is the uh, that is probably a problem with uh, with uh, many people. They they don't they probably sometimes don't know why they're doing it. Uh, so uh, yeah, I guess uh, we can just leave it at that for the time being. Uh, any final comments, Praveen, uh, Franklin? Any thoughts as we close for today? <laughs> Is it Sikinda? Is it? Did you want to say something? The whole of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament says fasting is a necessity. It means uh, in faith, in uh, our uh, practices. Jesus said in the Old Testament also there is uh, the indication of fasting. Okay. So All there right. is a reason for that. There is a benefit for that. We are nearing to God. If our problem is not solved, that is our uh, blessing. That is, there we stand. God wishes us then and there only. That's all. If the problem is solved, it's okay. Not solved is also, it's okay. Uh, we have put the problem before him. It is collectively or individually or group. A group, a Christian group, is facing a problem. We keep fasting. That is, result, end result, we will be leaving it to God. 
that is the that is my meaning okay thank you sikanda yeah that's uh, very simple and uh, helpful anil you had a thought yeah what i was going to say is that probably it's uh, best to uh, consider fasting as a humbling experience in the sense uh, you know even a day without food or, or water uh, we can't sustain ourselves we, we, we become so anxious and impatient and so on so shows us how totally dependent we are on god and of course uh, uh, during that time if we spend more time with god so much the better but it's more we are humbling ourselves before him saying that we look god we are totally dependent on you yes i think that's well said anil i think perhaps that is something that comes out loud and clear and as i remember one i think one pastor saying that uh, he puts it this way he says fasting is showing that god is more important than food for me <laughs> uh, god is more important than food so uh, that's how he puts it so i think on that note uh, we will end the study here and we will look at one or two more disciplines and then we will end the series on spiritual disciplines okay so uh, let's close in prayer buddy could you please lead us in a closing prayer thank you let's bow our heads father god we just thank you for this midweek bible study uh, on zoom platform we are grateful lord that we are covering subjects lord uh, which are based on your word and we are here feeding on your word lord and as uh, uh, mr zakaria mentioned uh, there are benefits and surely it's one thing that is good for us lord uh, uh, though it's not mandated uh, like the day of atonement uh, where the how god brought at one man man and god and his sacrifice but uh, we we do need to know the lord that we uh, want more of you and lord we desire that you be more in us and lord we should be desiring because we are in you we are in christ and we depend on you lord and we trust in you and uh, we humble ourselves before you lord do your uh, working in us lord help us to have regards for your operation and your working in our lives we thank you so much for the subject which was covered today continue to bless us with your word continue to guide mr zakari who's lord whom you are using so uh, excellently lord in teaching us uh, the truths of the bible help us to walk in truth the truth is in jesus thank you lord and bless the people who attended and all the others who who trust in you have faith in you help us lord let our eyes be on you help us to wait upon you call upon you and be mindful of the things of the lord thank you father please help us and you you to see the glory honor and praise and lord everything comes from you lord help us to conform to christ holy spirit complete your work in us father you have begun a good work of good work in us you will complete it unto the day of jesus christ may our body mind and spirit be lord blameless uh, at the time of jesus lord in christ uh, lord you will complete it god has promised to what is begun he will complete it thank you father help us in this discipline of fasting help us to see it in the right perspective and be blessed lord lord help us inspire us to do things which are pleasing in your sight as we claim to be in you as we claim to be your children and your disciple please help us thank you again and bless your people thank you father we pray all this in the blessed and glorious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen